Um, hi. All right, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. And as you can tell by the title, today we are talking about Taylor Jenkins Reid. My favorite author, far and away, if you've been watching me for any amount of time, you have surely heard me gush about one, if not all of her books. There is simply no author that makes me feel things in the way that Taylor Jenkins Reid makes me feel things. She's just one of those authors where every single one of her books, I just feel like she wrote it just for me, like she was trying to speak to me, like she just dug inside my brain and pulled out my deepest, darkest fears, insecurities, thoughts just everything and she just is like here you go Nikki this is what you needed to read in this moment and I just adore her and over the past year and a half maybe two years I have read every single one of her books I am officially out of them I've read her entire backlog and because I have read all of her books and because I tend to talk about them very often I tend to get a lot of questions a lot of people want to know what her books are about like where they should begin what order they should read them in how they're connected or not connected which ones are my favorites like I just get lots of questions so I just figured it was about time that I do just one one-stop shop video that is just like Nikki's ultimate guide to Taylor Jenkins Reid where I talk briefly about every single one of her books explain the connections and then also rank them for you based on my personal preference so that is what we're gonna do today she has nine books for us to talk about so we'll just get into it i feel like i'm kind of just gonna like be really chatty about this i have a tear maker template pulled up that i created where i have all of the books on here and i have five categories because this is how this thing works so um, i'm kind of just gonna like talk about each of the books and then i will place them in my ranking for them the Five rankings that we have are life-changing, brain-altering, stuck with me, meaning that like after I finished it, it just like I thought about the book for weeks to come, couldn't stop thinking about it, felt things was it made me feel things, and then <laughs> the fifth category is not my fave, but wow. As you can probably tell from these category titles, there's not a single one of her books that I don't like. So there's not going to be a category that's like hated it, it sucks, like throw it away, burn it because it simply doesn't exist. Every single one of her books I liked, but just like for the purpose of this video, we're gonna rank them. I'm gonna tell you my favorites. So um, that is what we are going to do. So yeah, I guess let's just get into it. So I do just wanna say generally for Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, <laughs> I'm gonna call her TJR for the rest of this video because I don't know why I always get stumbled up on her name, but when you're talking about TJR's books, they are all standalones. You can pick up any one of her books in any time, in any order, and you'll be able to read it just fine. You don't need any prior knowledge from any of these books. But if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, I do want to talk about how she writes in two separate universes, or at least she has thus far. The first universe that she has is her famous people slash historical fiction sort of world that she has. All of these books are about different famous people, tells their stories. They all exist in the same world and they all kind of connect in a way, whether it's like a cameo or a crossover or a character that you meet in one book, but then they get their own story in the other book. They all connect, they all exist in the same world, but you don't have to read them in any certain order. You don't have to read every single one but it does just make it kind of fun. And I am gonna talk about them in the order that you should read them if you do want that full experience. If you're dorky like me, if you wanna catch all the Easter eggs, read it in the order that you're kind of like meant to read it so that it chronologically makes sense, this would be that order. So that would mean, first of all, we are going to talk about The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I think this is definitely TJR's most iconic book, her most talked about book, the one that really launched her into fame. It's just like one of the book talk books. Um, this story basically is about this woman named Evelyn Hugo that was this massive superstar in old Hollywood in the 50s. Think Elizabeth Taylor. Throughout her life she had seven husbands and she was super famous but she always was a little bit mysterious. She never really let on much about her personal life, she's never really done interviews, she's always kind of been this enigma. But now she is an elderly woman, she's in her 60s, maybe 70s, and she's basically ready for the first time in decades to do an interview, do a sort of tell-all, and give her life story. So that is basically what this book is about. Um, this book is so popular, and I've seen so many people say that it is their 
favorite book of all time and this is <laughs> we're starting off this video with a hot take of course i liked it of course i thought it was a great story everything tjr writes is great to me but funny enough this is like not my favorite book of hers <laughs> there are just i don't know there was a character in this story that is a very important part of the story that i just really didn't vibe with i also kind of felt like for me the story got really repetitive once you got to about the third husband it was like okay you're just seeing each of her relationships each of her husbands once you kind of figure out what's going on and what you know really is evelyn's life story that she's kind of kept hidden this entire time i feel like the book i don't know just drug a little bit for me i also feel like there's kind of this twist to the story that i didn't see coming but the actual ending of the story that's supposed to be the big kind of like jaw-dropping moment i guessed from <laughs> page like 10 i just thought it was super obvious and that's what ended up happening so it just didn't blow my mind i definitely liked it but i just don't think it hit me in the way that it hit a lot of other people so for me i honestly am gonna put this in not my fave but wow so please don't click off this video right away literally tjr is my favorite author <laughs> but that's just my personal opinion and i think the reason that I don't love Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so much is because I adore Daisy Jones and the Six, which is the next book we're going to talk about. Um, Daisy Jones and the Six follows this band that was the most iconic band in the 70s. And this story is told in a documentary sort of script style format where each member of the band and a lot of people that were involved in their success are being interviewed. And you really see how Daisy Jones and the rest of the band came together, how they got their start, how they rose to fame, and how they ultimately broke apart. And this was actually the first Taylor Jenkins Reid book that I ever read, and it absolutely blew my mind. I had just never read a book that was written in this sort of format, and Daisy was just a character that I just found to be, God, just so incredible. I mean, Evelyn Hugo is such a strong character, but Daisy Jones is like, an enigma she just really resonated with me and I kind of think you're either gonna be an Evelyn Hugo or a Daisy Jones girl you're gonna really love that 50s Hollywood glamour sort of scene or you're gonna be more into the 70s rock and roll sort of scene it just was such a vibe for me the entire book I just loved it I just felt like the characters felt so real the conflicts in the story it's also very heavily inspired by Fleetwood Mac which I adore Fleetwood Mac it just was a book that really hit me. I bawled my eyes out when I finished it because I just felt like this band was so real and I just wanted to listen to their music so badly and now we can because the show exists on Amazon Prime and there's an album and I think there's gonna be a tour really soon. I bawled my eyes out <laughs> during the first episode of Daisy Jones. Like I just adore this book so much. So for me, it's gonna go in life changing. Like seriously, it's one of my absolute all time favorite books. Um, it's just one of the best for me. But next, we need to talk about Malibu Rising. This story takes place in the 80s in Malibu. It follows the four children of a very famous rock star named Mick Riva. We actually see Mick Riva in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. He is actually one of her seven husbands. And we also see a small cameo from him in Daisy Jones. But now we are meeting his four children and this story is so interesting the way that it's told because it takes place over the course of many years but also one day um nina riva is the oldest daughter she is a famous swimsuit model surfing model and all of the children are surfers that's really what they do in some capacity or another they're all involved with surfing but nina riva is famous for throwing this annual party every single year in Malibu. Anybody that's anybody goes to this party and it is time for that party once again. It is the day of it. And um, a lot of people think she's not gonna have it because Nina just went through a really rough sort of breakup. Her husband is a famous tennis player and he was just caught cheating on her with another famous tennis player. So a lot of people think the party's gonna be canceled, but cannot happen this is the highlight of nina's year she has to throw it so we're seeing <laughs> leading up to the party but we're also flashing back to the past we're seeing mick riva and his wife originally get together seeing the children being born seeing what they go through seeing the life of a rock star trying to be a dad and how these children kind of had to grow up without a dad and really be their own you know <laughs> parental figures nina really took on the role of a parent and you're seeing all of that you're seeing them grow up but also present day each of the four children are all going through 
very personal issues and everything kind of just comes to a head at this party and just blows up. It's a really different type of story. Like this isn't really a romance book. It's a really a book about families and relationships and just all the inner workings of that. It was just so different, so good. Great summer vibes. It's set in the 80s. It's set in Malibu. I just loved it. Um, I loved it, but it's not one of my absolute favorites. I would say it definitely made me well, did it feel, did I feel things or did it stick with me? I'm gonna go with felt things. I really loved it though. I especially loved it because I read it in the summer and it just, it was fun and I love the connection of it to the other books. So next we have to talk about Carrie Soto is back. This is my favorite Taylor Jenkins Reid book. Honestly, by a mile. It's one of my favorite books of all time, if not my favorite book of all time. I honestly made the category of life changing for this book. Um, cause it, it really did at the time that I read it, it, it messed me up in the best possible way. It was just something that I absolutely needed to hear. I genuinely feel that my life has been changed since I read it. Like the way that I've thought about life, it just, let me explain. <laughs> Basically this story follows a woman named Carrie Soto, who we actually meet in Malibu Rising. She is the woman that Nina Riva's husband was cheating on her with. She is that famous tennis player. So Carrie Soto is the greatest tennis player of all time. And now when this story starts out, she is 37. She's been retired for a few years. She is a legend. She's broke every single record in the book, but now present day, there is this new up and coming tennis star named Nikki Chan, who is about to tie her record. And the story starts out with Carrie sitting at that match, watching this happen, watching Nikki, in fact, tie her record, so Carrie has to decide whether or not she's going to let that stand, and spoiler alert, she does not. So Carrie decides to come out of retirement of, at the age of 37, start training again with her father, who has been her coach her entire life, and she's intent on getting her record back and maintaining her status as the greatest tennis player of all time. So in the story, you flash back and you see Carrie's childhood growing up, you see her father telling her from, you know, when she was a child that she is meant to be the greatest tennis player of all time coaching her you see how she didn't really have a life because tennis was all she cared about she poured her entire heart and soul into it she really is seen by the media and by everybody as this like stone cold bitch because she just like doesn't care about making friends she doesn't care about having relationships she just wants to be the best and that's all she's ever known and so this book is just it's really about <laughs> having contentment and working hard but just understanding that at some point it's got to be enough and that you know you're never going to have it all there's always going to be someone better that everybody is working hard everybody's trying to find success but you know what's really important at the end of the day you know do you want to be alone with all your trophies or do you want to have friends around you like it's just about the people that are really ambitious that just don't know when to stop and are never happy and are always looking for the next thing about how they can be better and not, not like appreciating the milestones as they come. If you're a person and that resonates with you, as you might be able to tell, it hit me very deep, very hard. Like I cried several times reading this book and just by the end I was like, oh my God, it blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. I know nothing about tennis. I've never even <laughs> really watched tennis, but regardless, like I was so hooked and so invested in this story and Carrie is just <sighs> a character that just meant so much to me. So I made the life-changing category for this book, but I simply could not put Daisy Jones in it because it really did kind of change my life as well. But Carrie Soto is gonna go before Daisy Jones because it's just, it's just everything to me. So as I started to mention earlier, TJR writes in two separate worlds. The first world we talked about was the famous people world, and now the other world is just her standalone world. All of her other standalone books are not connected, but they all take place in LA. But there is kind of a kicker to all of this because we do have this one story that kind of bridges the gap between her two worlds. It is this short story called Evidence of the Affair. And basically what this story is is this husband and this wife end up realizing that their spouses are cheating on them with each other. So this story, I think it takes place in the 70s, maybe into the 80s, but um, basically it's like a series of letters written between this man and this woman talking about, you know, I've realized, I've found evidence that our spouses are cheating, I'm so sorry to tell you this, and they're kind of talking back and forth and, you know, trying to figure out how they're gonna handle this, what they're gonna do about it, 
try and understand where it all went wrong in their marriages and kind of over time the two of them start to form this sort of bond and I don't know it's it's a short story and a lot kind of happens in the short amount of time it definitely has a twist at the end but it kept me super entertained I flew through it in one sitting I really liked it but the way that it connects these two stories is that it does take place in LA but there is mention of some of the characters in the famous people world like Daisy Jones is mentioned and whenever I saw that I didn't know it was in there and I was like oh my gosh so it was just kind of a fun little bridge between the two worlds but because this is a short story, because it's all written in letter format, there's not too much of a story to it. I definitely liked it, but it wasn't like, you know, it was fun in the moment, but it's not anything that's just crazy. So I'm gonna put it in the not my fave, but wow category. Okay, now we are getting into the four true standalones of TJR. So first of all, we have Forever Interrupted, which was her first novel. This story is about a woman that has this whirlwind romance with this man. She goes to pick up a pizza from a pizza shop one day, ends up meeting this man, they just hit it off, have the most amazing chemistry, and within a few months they, they elope and they get married. And now at the start of the story, the two of them have been married for just a little over a week and her husband leaves the house to go run an errand and he gets in an accident and passes away. So this whole situation very quickly becomes very complicated because their relationship was so short, they got married so fast that most of the people in her husband's life do not even know that she exists. She hasn't even met her husband's mother yet. Um, there's just a lot of things that are complicated with it. So now she's having to deal with the funeral arrangements, meeting all these family members she's never met before as this man that has just passed away is wife and then also kind of coming to terms with the fact that she fell in love with this man he was the love of her life she planned to spend the rest of her life with him he was supposed to be her forever but now within a week it's all over and she's supposed to just start over and she's still so young what does she do um it was a really sad kind of heavy book but it it was one of those books that just has the theme that i feel like kind of all of taylor jenkins reads books have this theme of you know, life goes on and it's day by day and you'll figure it out. You don't have to have it all figured out, but life is a journey, life's a climb, but the view is great kind of moment. So um, very, very good. Definitely it made me think a lot, hit me very hard, but um, definitely not my favorite. Like I wouldn't reread it. So I'm gonna put it under felt things cause it definitely, it made me feel lots of things, but it's gonna go behind Malibu Rising for sure. Next we have Maybe in Another Life. So this story follows this woman that has never really known what her path is in life. She's kind of been one of those people where every year she just has to move and start over. She's lived in every city, she's had every occupation, she just can't figure out what she wants, where she wants to be, where she fits in. You know, she's nearly 30 I think whenever this story begins and she still doesn't have a career path, she's not in a committed relationship, she just doesn't know what she's doing and so she just recently went through some really rough things and she's been talking to her best friend about it and her friend is like, you know what, you need to stop. Come back home to LA, just chill out here for a while, start over, stay with me and my husband until you can kind of get on your feet and then we'll see where we go from here. So she comes back to LA and her friend throws her this sort of like welcome back party and at this party her ex-boyfriend is there her kind of first love her high school sweetheart if I remember correctly and pretty much what happens in this story is that it's told from two different points of view based on one singular decision that this woman makes and that is whether or not to go home with her best friend or to go home with her ex-boyfriend and so the entire story plays out alternating between these two different timelines and basically seeing what would have come of her life based on just this one decision and you might think like what could have possibly happened just based on her going home with the one person or the, or the other but like it is so drastically different and it's so interesting to watch it play out it really was just I don't know it was just a very different type of book I've never read anything like it but by the end it really did give me all the warm and fuzzies because it kind of is again one of those books that just reminds you that life is just something you take by day by day and it all kind of works out in the end and you'll figure it out and there can be many different possible versions of your life but what's important is just kind of finding your happiness at the end of the day no matter what that might be so i really liked it i'm gonna also put this one i think i'm gonna put this one under i don't i don't think i liked it more than malibu rising 
but it did stick with me. This one definitely for a week or so stuck with me. I think I might put it, no, I didn't like it more than Malibu Rising. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Um, I'm gonna put it with stuck with me. Yeah, you know what? I'm sticking with that. Okay, so next we have After I Do. This story is not one that I really thought I was gonna love. I kind of put off reading this one a little bit just because the concept, I was just not sure how it was gonna go, but pretty much it is about this husband and this wife that have been married about five years now. They've really gotten past that honeymoon phase and they are just not communicating. They're not speaking to one another. They are just fighting about every little thing. They can't get along and they are just at a point where they love each other, but they're not in love with each other anymore. So you kind of see in this story the two of them initially meeting back in college, you see their relationship kind of grow over time, you see them get engaged, fall madly in love, you know, get their first house, you see that honeymoon phase of them just being so happy and giddy and in love, and then you kind of see it fast forward, and you see them get to the place where they are now, where they just simply can't stand each other, they don't wanna spend any time together, they don't know how to even have a conversation, they don't feel like they have anything to talk about, and then it all kind of just blows up, and the two of them need to decide what to do because what's what's happening right now isn't working. So neither one of them really wants to get divorced. I mean, they again, they love each other, but they're just not in love with each other. And so they end up kind of forming this plan that the two of them are going to spend a year apart. Uh, the husband's gonna move out. They are going to totally just live their own lives. There's no rules. They're gonna do whatever it is they wanna do. They're not gonna communicate at all during this year. And then at the end of the year, They'll come back together and basically just decide what they want to do, if they want to stay together, if they want to get divorced, whatever it may be. So this book was such an emotional journey. It really is so interesting. You see the entire thing from the wife's point of view. So you kind of see the roller coaster of emotions of, you know, her kind of like honestly hating her husband. And but then when the time comes that they make this deal and they go their separate ways, having to go through those emotions of being apart for so, from someone that you have spent the last several years of your life with every single day, and then kind of the excitement of, oh wow, I'm totally on my own. I can do everything that I want, anything that I want. Like, I don't have to consult anybody. But then you kind of see the come down of, okay, was this really as exciting as I thought it was gonna be? Was the grass really that much greener? And then there's just so much to it, um, such a journey with it. I really, really loved this book. I think. It just, I don't know, it really spoke to me because I am definitely one of those people, like you might have been able to tell from my love of Carrie Soto, I kind of tend to always think like, what's next? What can I do better? Like the grass is always greener. And if you get stuck in that mindset, you know, you're never going to be happy. And this is really one of those books that reminds you of that, to remind you that, you know, life's a journey, relationships are a journey, and to appreciate what you have and focus on what you have versus what you don't have. And by the end of it, God, my heart just exploded. There's also a lot of side characters in this book that just show all different types of relationships and just shows you that not every relationship has to be exactly the same and that there's really no rules. I just, I adored it, honestly. I'm gonna put it under brain altering because it, <laughs> I needed to hear it. I really did. I, I loved it so much more than I thought I would. It really became one of my favorites of hers. And then lastly, we have One True Loves. This book is basically, if you've seen the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks, this is Castaway told from the wife's point of view is how I like to put it. Uh, this story follows this woman that you know, grows up in this really small town. Her parents own this little bookshop and her whole life she's just been known as the girl whose parents own the bookshop and all she ever wanted was to get out of her small town, to travel, to see the world and she ends up meeting this guy that is just the love of her life. He's totally just like her. All he wants to do is travel and they just have this total whirlwind romance where they just fall so in love, they travel the world, they get engaged, get married and they're just on top of the world. She just loves him so much and then he ends up getting on a helicopter to go off on a work assignment and the helicopter crashes, goes down, isn't seen ever again and it's assumed that this man is dead. So we see her grieve, just like get so heartbroken, so distraught over this and grieve over this man until finally she's kind of forced to move on. She ends up moving back to her small town, ends up working at this bookstore she never really thought she wanted to work at, but 
through the process of that, she ends up, you know, meeting this new man, falling in love with him. And now at this point, she's actually engaged to him. She's finally starting to find some happiness again. And then she learns that her husband is alive. He has been stranded this entire time for three years, trying to just get back to her. <laughs> but now she's engaged to someone else. So it's her kind of having to deal with this and decide what she's going to do. And it was just such a good book. Obviously it's a very dramatic story and not super realistic story, but at the, at the heart of it, it's really just about how people change and how somebody, you know, needs to be a suitable life partner for you. And it's not always about, you know, whirlwind, crazy romance. It's about, you know, <laughs> what works and how your life fits with somebody else and how people can change and that's okay. And what you want can change. And as you grow and mature, you know, just, having an appreciation for where you come from. Like there's just so many themes in this book that I really loved and really kind of spoke to me specifically. I come from a small town where my parents own a small business and I kind of, I just really related to the main character and I think a lot of people can in some way or another relate to this girl and what she goes through and I just, I loved it. I'm gonna put it in brain altering as well. It was always, like I've always said that Carrie Soto, Daisy Jones and One True Loves are kind of my holy trinity for TJR but I read After I Do back in January and it's just like stuck with me. I keep thinking about it. So I'm honestly not sure which one I liked better. I think One True Loves, I'll put it in front of After I Do. But um, yeah, these top four books I really love. I feel like Carrie Soto honestly needs to be in like its own category, but I just love Daisy Jones so much. Like Carrie Soto is the life changing one, just like literally changed my life. I don't know how many other times I could say it. I feel like everybody needs to read that book. Um, it might not speak to everyone in the same way that it spoke to me, but um, it's just, it's a very, very good book. And then Daisy Jones, just the vibes of it, everything else, just like that heart-wrenching, passionate love and angst, like, oh, it's just so good. But um, yeah, guys, that is kind of my ultimate guide to Taylor Jenkins Reid, my ranking of her books. You can really start anywhere. Like I said, if you read the Famous People series, I would read it in the order that I said. I think Seven Husbands is a great place to start, and then Daisy Jones, Malibu Rising, and then um, Carrie Soto, so you follow the chronological timeline. When it comes to her standalones, I honestly say maybe start reading them in the order, like from my least favorite to my favorite, just because they're all good. Like you will enjoy every single one, but I kind of like when you read a book and you're like, oh my God, this is so good. And then they just keep getting better. So maybe start with Forever Interrupted, maybe in another life after I do, and then One True Loves. I really think that is a good path to go that will not disappoint you. But yeah, guys, I am so like in my feels because I read an article from um, an interview done with Taylor Jenkins Reid recently, and she is not really planning on writing any more books anytime soon, which I don't blame her. Uh, Daisy Jones and the Six just became a show. Evelyn Hugo is about to become a movie. Carrie Soto just got signed. Um, the rights for it just got bought. It's gonna become a movie or a show or something. I will die the day that comes out, but I mean, she's had so much success. She deserves a break. I really don't blame her, but she's my favorite author, like seriously. She just speaks to me like no one else. So I hope, you know, after she gets her well-deserved break, we will get another book from her, but this is what we have for now. But yeah, guys, if you've read Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, <laughs> I cannot say her name. If you've read TJR's books, I would love to hear your thoughts, your rankings, which one's your favorite, anything you want to tell me, whichever one you're most excited about based on the ones we talked about. But um, yeah, guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.